The following is a presentation of SC State Athletics. After a three-game road trip and an open week, the South Carolina State Bulldogs are finally in Orangeburg to play the 2023 home opener against the Citadel Bulldogs. Now, Bulldogs have only played three times prior, the Citadel having won all three, that last one coming in 2001. The Bulldogs of Charleston are coached by Maurice Drayton, a former Buddy Pugh and South Carolina State assistant. Now, both teams have struggled offensively, and confidence and points will make a difference in which Bulldog team will walk away with perhaps their first win. Who's O is going to go? We're about to find out. Coming up next on the Buddy Pugh Show. Alex bounces it outside in the 40, turns the corner into 45, at the field, in the board, in state territory, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, takes a break, hit the board, 40, 40, 40, 40, 35, 30, Donnie Dixon, 25, 20, 15, 10, Donnie Dixon, 5, touchdown, Donnie Dixon, he keeps it himself, Javon Dixon, he's got wrapped up and gets him on the turf. Coach Few back at home. The Citadel Bulldogs, I don't know which is better, the fact that uh, we can get to play an in-state guy that we know, but the fact to be back at home and get ready for a football game. It's great to be home, and it's also great to have an opportunity to start building a rivalry of sorts with our cross-state rival, the Citadel, here today. I'm looking forward to meeting with Coach uh, Drayton and the rest of his crowd and us getting this thing going and maybe keeping it going for years to come. So I think we are starting something that can last for a long, long time. Coach, what's been going on as far as practice is concerned? What have you been working on trying to get prepared? You know, you, we saw some improvement, believe it or not, at Georgia Tech. We played a whole lot better that week. Talk about what you have to do going into this game. Well, we thought we did play some better and we're trying to continue to add to that. Uh, we'd like to continue to maybe do a little bit of the option kind of stuff that we've done and to get the ball outside on the flank and take advantage of people that's packing in a little bit on us. We're not throwing it quite as well as I'd like. We've worked on trying to throw it a little bit better so that we can kind of give people the indication of they, they can't beat us up that way. So if we can back them off the two ways, both wide with the option and that kind of stuff with the outside runs and then with the throw game, then maybe that'll give us a chance to redevelop our running game, which we've been struggling to really make happen. Coach, talk about the running game. Talk about the defensive run, the changes you made on defense. How that will that affect the game? And were there any real changes there or you just try to get healthy and get everybody yeah. on the field? Yeah, it's more about getting healthy, trying to get all of our guys back in one piece. Again, we've had two or three guys out for, you know, sometimes. And Dunham, uh, one of our uh, outside linebackers, has been out. Uh, we, we, we think we got him back now, pretty much full speed. Uh, a couple of our corners have been banged up a little bit. I think, you know, they're mostly back. Uh, uh, Mike Brunson got banged up a little bit late in the week this week. I'm hoping that he can go forward today. But, you know, th we've got four corners that we feel pretty good about. But the big thing about it is, at this point, we feel good about our secondary as a whole as far as being able to go out and operate. Coach, with two teams being 0-3, confidence plays a lot in this football game. How do you get out early to a fast start to get some confidence on your side of the football? Yeah, you need to get a good start. Uh, the last thing you need is to get down and have to, you know, find some confidence while you're behind. You know, you need to get going early. Hopefully we can get a good start with these guys. We'll defer as usual if we win the toss. If we don't win the toss, you know, that's, you know, that's been a good way for us to get going too. So, you know, between the two different directions, let's see if we can make this thing happen early. If that be the case, then I think that gives a chance to get a good hot start. Key to the game, coach, more what you do than what they do. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that way. We, we need to be able to play the option. We got to do a good job of tackling. They, they, they individualize your tackling skills and make you fundamentally sound that way. Hopefully we can make that happen and then offensively we got to be able to run football. All right, Coach, best of luck this afternoon. Thanks a bunch, Ernie. Maxion Cobb will be kicking off for South Carolina State from left to right. High end over end kick, and this is going to be Romello Jones at the 5, at the 10, at the 15, at the 20, across the 25, up to about the 26-yard line. Nick Brown in the game of tight ends, so two tight ends for the Bulldogs, all receivers tight to the line of scrimmage. Back to pass, they flared out of the backfield. This is Juwan Howell on the corner at the 25. Howell gets the first down up at the 30-yard line. Wide sides to the quarterback's right. Corey rolling to the left. Corey looking. Corey throwing. Got a man out there. It is caught. Richard Bailey first down up at the 42-yard line. Nice toss and catch. Tony, the H, back to the left. Corey back to pass, looking right. Corey looking long. Pump fake, now going long. Got Justin Smith round out there. He caught. Was the inbounds? Yes. Touchdown, South Carolina State. From 34 yards out, 
Corey Fields to Justin Brown. South Carolina <laughs> State on its first possession in the first home game takes it into the end zone. Second down and two from the 49-yard line. They give it to Casey again. Over, no, Corey keeps it himself at the 45. Corey at the 40, 35, 30, 25 to 20. Corey down to about the 13-yard line. I was about to say one man to beat. Second and four from the eight-yard line from the seven. They give it to Casey again. Casey cuts it back. Casey gets down to about the one-yard line. Let's see where they mark him down. They mark him down at the two. Howell's on his left now. They give it to Howe. Howe dances into the end zone. For, oh, no, I'm sorry. He did not give it to Howe. He kept it himself, and he didn't get in, and the Citadel has stopped, has stopped the, Bulldogs the Bulldogs at the goal line. Boy. Shotgun snap, Corey. Hand off inside, breaking the tackle, and running with the football for South Carolina State, and running with authority. That is Tyler Smith. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. You play on the reservation, you better be able to play. Play action that? fake. Corey's looking long. Corey throwing long. Corey got a man out there. It is picked off at the goal line. Intercepted and brought back at the 15, at the 20, at the 25, at the 30. Still going on his feet and down to the 35-yard line of South Carolina State. Hand off. Fletcher kept it himself. Tackle for loss. Patrick Godbolt tackled him back at the 12-yard line. It'll be a 25-yard field goal attempt. His toe is in it, it is up, and it is good on the second opportunity. Whoa. So it's 7.25 to go here in the first half. Our score, South Carolina State 7, the Citadel 3. Two Bulldogs are left, one right. Hand off. This is Josh Shaw. Shaw at the 35, at the 30. Shaw up to about the 34-yard line. Shotgun snap. Here comes pressure. Corey steps up, throws it out. It is caught. Keyshawn Tony at the 49-yard line into the little territory. Shotgun snap to Corey. He's looking right, throwing right. Got a man out there caught at the 10-yard line. Keyshawn Tony breaks the tackle. Coney reaches into the end zone for the score. Keyshawn Tony with a huge individual effort. Bill Hamilton after he caught the football was not going to be denied. With 38 seconds to go here in the first half for a score. South Carolina State 14 to Citadel Threes. Shotgun snap. Play action fake. Corey's looking long. Corey's throwing long. Got a man out there caught. Nigel Johnson down at the five yard line I with don't. 14 seconds to go. Shotgun formation. Corey Fields rolling to his right. Flips it out there. It is caught. Tackled down at the three yard line. Second down. Fields is, t is tackled down. That's the end of the first half of player score. South Carolina State 14. The Citadel 3. All right, Coach, we started this one about as well as we've started any football game. You take the first possession, go right down the field and get it in the end zone. Yeah, we got a stop on defense. I actually got two stops on defense because we ran into the punt on the first time around. They got another set of downs. But we eventually got them stopped, and then our offense got on the field and drove the football down the field. It was good. We had a couple third-down conversions. We got tested some in that first drive. So it was good to see us convert and get the football down the field and get it all the way in the end zone. Got a little concerned, Coach, when the score is just 7-3. and three. Of course, the Citadel eventually got on the board. But their defense really stood tall and really challenged their offense. And getting that stop they at did. the goal line, Kind of opened some eyes. Is it, exactly. We still can't quite find sometimes the big rush when we got to have a yard. And you know, that's got to be one of the make, big uh, issues we got to solve during our next two week break. So we are off again next week. That gives us a chance to kind of get in there and work on this deal so that we can be prepared to deal with that Virginia Lynchburg and into Tennessee Tech and then into the conference. Let me kind of get into your mind a little bit, Coach, from the standpoint of thinking, talking about getting mm -hmm. that one yard. You were very determined to run that football in the end zone. I know there are other things that you probably could have done down at the goal line to get it in the end zone, but it seems like you were saying to yourself, look, we got to figure out yeah. how to get this thing blocked and get we in. Do. We do. And first off, we got to drive the football in the end zone and be able to just use it. For, I mean, just be able to drive it for a one-yard gain. But at the same time, you need to try to figure out how to get a little diversity in your deal, too. So we had another play for the fourth down play, and it was wide behind open, and we didn't, and we didn't execute it. Our, but our freshman running back, they can really play, but they can really be freshmen sometimes, <laughs> too. So when you get a freshman with an audible and a lot of stuff going on, you don't know what might happen. We ended up with a train wreck back there when we fourth down. <laughs> well, you start <laughs> talking about that one train wreck that didn't happen. Corey Fields had his best Did. game so far. And you talked about in years past him getting into the 60% category from the standpoint of uh, completion percentage. He did that Saturday. He did. I, and I'm so happy for Corey because the Citadel is kind of sort of his hometown team. He's from Hollywood or Megan or, or somewhere down there around Edisto Beach. And 
these guys are all kind of connected that way. So everybody, that, and a lot of Charleston newspapers and that kind of stuff were here, all of the TV stations. So it was a good night for him, and I'm excited for him. He threw the ball for right at about 300 yards and ran the football well and did, you know, just did a nice job of running our team. And you could see the rhythm of our offense tonight. That was really probably the most gratifying part of the whole night. After struggling 7-3, Coach, you did get a late touchdown in the first half. Talk a little bit about that from the standpoint of finally getting the offense <laughs> yeah. back in sync after getting knocked out of yeah. sync after that stoppage at the goal line. Yeah, we ended up getting a score. I think we got a Justin Smith-Brown hit a touchdown throw for us, and it was a nice uh, deep ball on maybe like uh, early downs, but at the same time, we hit it back down at the very end and don't get it in. And we had uh, Travion Houston, one of our uh, transfer uh, wide receivers, quarterbacks, all that kind of stuff. He's a left-handed guy. And we run a little reverse thing to him, and he could have done like four things that would have scored for us. He could have <laughs> run it in, he could have he could have waited a little bit and threw it in, he could have done a little something and gotten it in. And he did just the wrong thing. He threw the ball short. And of course, at that point, we didn't have any timeouts now. So once that ball hit the ground and I knew he had caught the ball, I just ran in the locker room because it was nothing else to do. That was where the first <laughs> half ended on Saturday night. South Carolina State leading the Citadel by score 14-3. We'll take a time out here on the Buddy Pugh Show. We'll come back with more after these messages. All right, welcome back to the Buddy Pugh Show. It is that time for the Prison Health Injury Report for the Citadel football game. And Coach, I venture to say there were not many injuries coming no, out of this ball what? game. We're getting kind of healthy. We got most of our guys back during the break between the Georgia Tech game and this game. So Justin Smith-Brown, who had been down with an ankle injury, high ankle sprain, I think he's starting to get close to 100% now. And then uh, Jordan Smith from Columbia is also getting close to being back 100%. So he had enough, a couple of nice runs today and did, did some nice things after some catches. So I'm thinking he's about there. Now Dallas and, Ford. And then Dallas Ford is coming back to, you know, to play a little bit. He got a little bit of a knee deal, but he's going to try to play through it for the rest of the season. And then at the end of the season, he's going to try to do some surgery to it. But at the same time, he's about as well as he's going to get now. So we're going to try to see if we can get him in there a little bit and get him going. So that's pretty much it for our injury report. All right, that's the injury report for the Prisma Health injury report for the Citadel football game. But it's now time for the Back to Give Back program sponsored by Food Lion. Of course, we appreciate the folks at Food Lion. For every sack the South Carolina State defense gets, they give a 1,000 meals to needy families Unfortunately, we haven't been a good contributor to that because for the second week in a row, Coach, we didn't get a sack. We didn't get another sack? We didn't get a sack. Oh, gosh. We had some tackles <laughs> for losses, but no sacks. Huh? No sacks. Well, we're going to try to see if we can get that straight for next week, so hopefully we get that down. <laughs> All right. I want to thank Food Line for the, the sack to give back program uh, here at South Carolina State. We're going to take another time out here on the Buddy Pew Show. When we come back, we'll have more after these messages. He approaches. It's a high end over end kick, and this is going to be Shamonte Burgess at the 15 at the 20. Burgess trying to get outside, gets up to a 23 yard line, still on his feet. Give to Juwan Howell over the right side. Howell at the 40, stays on his feet at the 45, to the 50, up to about the 48 yard line. H back is to the left. Shotgun snap to Corey. Gives it to Casey. Casey up, I mean, Casey up the middle. Casey to the 30. That's another eight yard run, and Casey Fields is starting to eat up those eight yards, Bill. There's a snap. Handoff inside. Getting the first down. Spinning is Juwan Howe. Gets to the 25 yard line. I'm sorry, that's Corey. That's Casey Fields. Shotgun snap to Corey. Play action fake. Looking long. Looked right. Now throwing left. Got a man out there. It is caught, but is he out of bounds? No. Touchdown. touchdown. He got My the one good down. Our score, South Carolina State 21 to Citadel 3. Play action fake. Corey flips it out to Tyler Smith. Catches it at the 10. Tackled down at the 8-yard line. That's another. Bulldog first down. Jordan Smith. Oh, high snap. But he gets got it, it down. Through. And Gavin gets it up. And it's good. 22-yard field goal for Gavin Zimmerman. And with four minutes and 36 seconds to go here in the third quarter, our score, South Carolina State 24, the Citadel 3. They snap it back to Corey. Option to the right. In the round. Handoff at the 25, at the 30. Making a man miss. That was Jordan Smith. What wow. a run on the end of the round. Jordan Smith faked the kid out of his <laughs> shoes. Shotgun formation for Corey Fields. 
Fields play action fake. Corey throwing it out. Keyshawn Tony catches it at the 45. Makes a man miss at the 35. Down to the 30. Tony going up the field. Tony not out of bounds yet. And now they get him out of bounds at the 33-yard line, but they never got him on the ground. Boy, he, I, I show he's you. next level, Bill. Shotgun formation for Corey. Back to pass. Here comes the blitz. They throw the screen. It's caught over there by Tyler Smith. Smith gets the first down at the 15. Makes a man miss at the 10. Five. Down to the one-yard line. What an individual effort by Tyler Smith, but a great play call and great execution by Corey Fields. Bulldog first down. Shotgun formation for Corey. Handoff inside, and here we go again. They struggle and push into the end zone yep. for the score. With 11-11 to go here in the ball game, our score, South Carolina State 31 to Citadel 3. Washington back to pass, and just like me and Bill said, we're going to run the ball. He throws it for a first down. 18-yard uh. pickup up at the 40-yard line. Shotgun snap, Andre throwing it. It is intercepted at the goal line. At the 10. And out of bounds and tackled down, and the penalty marker will go down. And Underwood, long snap, back to pass. Throws a little screen out of the backfield. This is, is that Cooper Wallace? It runs like Cooper Wallace. Let's see. Underwood rolling out, back to pass, looking long. Has a man on the wheel right. That's Cooper Wallace. Cooper Wallace breaks the tackle at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, at the 5. Like Cooper he's Wallace touchdown. Wow. The Citadel. And so with 2.16 remaining here in the ballgame, our score, South Carolina State 31, the Citadel 10. And Andre takes the knee, and that's going to do it. And count it down as Buddy Pugh will get his first win of the season. All right, second half, South Carolina State and the Citadel. And, Coach, the second half for South Carolina State was like the first half, which was a good thing for the Bulldogs. It was. We had some good drives in the second half, but now we ended the first half in a crazy way, and I was really wanting to make sure that we got started in a positive way in the second half, and we did. We got the football back in the, at, at the beginning of the second half and drove it down and scored, and we didn't end up punting the second half at all, so we didn't end up punting for the entire football game, which is really unusual for us. So it was one of those things where I thought our offense played about as well as it could play. I'll tell you what, programs should have been an all-time record high because you kept putting different running backs in the yeah. ball games. It was hard for us to keep up with, and all of them yeah. had some good production. You're right. We got four guys that are really playing well. Uh, we got the Howell kid from, from Mooresville. We got the, the, uh, the Fields the, kids the, from the, Beaufort. The Fields kid from Beaufort. And those guys were in high school last year, those time. And then we got Tyler Smith and, and uh, Josh Shaw. Those guys were both red shirts last year, so they're both back with four years remaining. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know which one of those guys I like the best in some cases. I'll tell you what, you go five deep because Deontay Dixon got into the ball game and he, he played did. well last year. He did. And we've got another Tyler Smith out there somewhere in the weeds <laughs> that we got, you know, kind of stuck around somewhere that I think is also a really good player too. So all those guys, we got six of them, I think, are really good football players. Coach, on the defensive side of the football against mm -hmm. the Citadel, I thought you really kind of came of age. You got Zan Dunham back, and he played a big role in his first ball game back coming off injury. You're right. I was happy to see Zan get back out and and, uh, and make some plays out there. And he's a little bit of a of a hybrid kind of guy anyway. He's a, almost a linebacker, but he plays like a defensive back, and he's got real good shape with him. He's got a little bit of quick twitch skill, kind of that kind of stuff. So the guy's a real athlete, and then you go – and look back in the back end, uh, uh, I thought Jalen Evans had one of his better games. He had some option uh, individual tackles on the pitch guy and that kind of stuff. That I thought, you know, were good. And, and then our corners played fairly well at times. So we didn't give up a big ball, although we, we had an opportunity or two to give up some big balls. And then at the very end, we let a guy get out in the end. And one of our defensive backs couldn't quite decide whether he wanted to attack the ball or whether attack the man. He kind of did a little bit of both and didn't do neither <laughs> at that point that he ended up with the, uh, uh, they ended up with a score out of that deal. But if it hadn't been for that, then we would have shut them out in the second half, which would have really been a nice prize for our defense. One no special teams, you didn't punt the football, and Gavin Zimmerman mm -hmm. made all his kicks. He did, Gavin did. We had a couple of leakage uh, problems early in our uh, PAT protection, but at the same time, he kicked it right on through there. Gavin's getting to be pretty good. I'm excited for him. And, you know, inside about 40 yards, maybe 45 yards. You know, he ain't bad, so I'm excited for us and the fact that we got – Pretty good kickers, both of them. All right, Bulldogs win it 31 to 10 over the Citadel. We'll take a moment here on the Buddy Pew Show. When we come back, we'll tell you what's up next for your South Carolina State Bulldogs on the Buddy Pew Show.
Welcome back to the Blake Pugh Show. Coach, you got Virginia Lynchburg, but you got another week off. Mm -hmm. How do you use that to your advantage? Because I'm sure when you guys go back at the Citadel game, I know everybody was enthusiastic. Kids had fun, enjoying, celebrating the game. But after you look at that film, I'm sure you're going to find some things oh, that we need to work on. Plenty. And we'll get in there and study that deal and figure out exactly what we ought to do and how and that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it gives us a chance to refine uh, offense some and defense too. And, you know, maybe find a way that we can get a little bit better so that we can get ready to really get tough, you know, by the time we get to the conference. We're three weeks off now from the conference. We go uh, home for a week right now. We, we vacant for a week. We, we got to buy a week. And then we go uh, Virginia Lynchburg home and Tennessee Tech here at home. And then after that, then we go into the conference. So we got our work cut up for us down the road a piece. So we really got to get our stuff together. And now's a great time. To, with some enthusiasm to go back and go to the drawing board because it's a lot easier to improve with a win than it is sometimes with a loss. Talk about Virginia Lynchburg coming up, Coach. Uh, they weren't very good last year, but mm -hmm. they've been improving. They improved, play us hard, and I'm sure they're going to play hard coming I'm in Orangeburg. I'm sure they will, and, you know, we'll get ourselves ready here, you know, to try to see what we can do against them. And it'll also give us opportunity to kind of really work on the things that we do best you know, in our offense and kind of lean on those things and kind of maybe either get better at the things that we don't do quite as well or, or leave them alone one. We need to figure that out. So we need to get ourselves to the point that we get ourselves refined to the point we know exactly what we're doing and when we're doing it. All right, that's going to be the final word here on this edition of the Buddy Pew Show. South Carolina State getting the win 31 to 10 over the Citadel. We hope to see you in two weeks when South Carolina State takes on Virginia Lynchburg at the Oliver C. Dawson Bulldog Stadium, Willie Jeffries Field. And of course, next week right here on Watch Fox 57 on the Buddy Pew Show.